It's just about a bunch of depressed French people after World War II. <laughs> a human being is only the sum of his life insofar as what he has created and achieved for himself. Yeah, but isn't Sartre the one that said, man, is a useless passion? I mean, you gotta admit, that's not exactly upbeat. True, and Smashing Pumpkin said, despite all my rage, I'm still just a rat in a cage. And yet, if you hold a mirror up to that lament, isn't the point and beauty of our humanity defined in that very image? So, in the very search for meaning, even if it's meaningless, you find meaning. Kinda. Oh, hey, Riley. So, I guess I'll see you at a study group? Study group? Shakespeare study group. It starts this afternoon. I guess I noticed your name on the sign-up sheet. Oh, yeah. There weren't that many names. Oh, okay. See ya. Great. Okay. I curiously do want to sneak up and watch on my parents' Tebo. Hey, Riley. Oh, hey, Brooke. How's it going? Hey, yeah. So, uh, you want to walk over to study group? Sure, great. Gotta go. Hey, unless you want to join us. Shakespeare study group. Yeah, come on. Sure, I guess I could always use help with the bard. Great. This is one of the bard's lesser-known sonnets, and for good reason. It's pretty obvious. The guy's obsessed. Let's move on. Hey, you know, actually, I think there's more to it than that. You do? Yeah. I mean, the sonnet is about his obsession with loving her and how painful and incredible that can be. In so profound abysm, I throw all care. He's saying it's hell. That's not depressing. But then there's this whole other side to it. You are my all the world, and I must strive to know my shames and praises from your tongue. He's declaring his love for her. I mean, despite everything, despite how miserable it makes him. I mean, it's like this true account of a soul in love. A soul that sets no limits on the extent of its devotion. Wow. <sighs> hey, you know they're showing Kenneth Braun as much to do about nothing at the Tiffany. That production is excellent. Hey, you know, maybe we could all go see it. How about Saturday matinee? Oh, I can't on Saturday. I have to do something with my mom Saturday afternoon. Well, hey, how about Saturday night? Saturday night? Yeah. I can't go out on Saturday nights. I'm 12. Oh, oh right. So then some other time. Well, we could still go. Oh, I don't think that would be... No, go. Definitely go. Are you sure? It's an excellent production. Okay. Great. 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 It was so great. I can't believe I read an entire Shakespeare play in one night. I actually read his entire oeuvre over a weekend. Yeah, I know. It's one of my favorites. And the way the whole thing comes together at the end. Oh. The denouement? Yeah, and Don Pepe is such a great character. Don Pedro. It, I just feel like it's opening up this secret world that I never knew about. Jeez, you're going to love the movie. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, Russell. Oh, um, this is Riley. Hello up there. <laughs> and Ian. How's it going, Ian? Oh, it's going great. Well, I guess I'll see you guys later then. See you around. Let's turn to Sonnet 129. All this the world well knows, yet none knows well. To shun the heaven that leads men to this hell. Hey, Riley, where were you? We were waiting. I've got something to say. I've spent my whole life being an outsider, and yet more inside than any insider because I understand human behavior better than anyone, and more than I should. But this intelligence is my gift, so I'm going to share it with you. You guys suck. Let me reiterate, you guys suck. I'm 12 years old, and I came to this school in good faith that the people here would be more intelligent, more intellectually sophisticated, more mature than my middle school, which quite frankly was like one of the lower circles of hell as far as I was concerned. So here I come with my hope and goodwill. And what happens? I get a crush on a boy. Now, I'm not an idiot. I know that if this boy is 16 and I'm 12, we're not going to be dating. But the heart is a strange and wild thing, and apparently you can't give it much advice. 
So here I am with this ludicrous crush, and one of the prettiest and most popular girls in the school decides to be my friend. So I'm like, cool, this is a really intelligent, fun girl to hang out with. And then the boy that I have the crush on sees me with this pretty and popular girl and thinks, hey, I can get to know her through Riley. And the pretty and popular girl, who actually has no romantic feelings for this boy, thinks I can use him to make the guy that I really like jealous. So here I am, 12 years old, simply wanting a more enlightened environment to grow and learn and finding myself in the middle of this ludicrous plot. I just have one question for the both of you. Who's the 12 year old? And my take on that particular sonnet is that love hurts.